Now I'm going to open this up to the table. So both, uh, both, both of the leading dailies here we see, of course, the biggest story this morning is the swearing in. And of course, an even bigger story that we'll touch on is Raila Odinga vows that he is to be sworn in on December 12th. But before that, let's take a look at some of the pledges here mm -hmm. that uh, President Kenyatta made yesterday to the Kenyan people. Mm -hmm. Leadership. Yes, that's a very key pledge that he made. Inclusivity. What do you make of that, looking at the state that we are in right now as a country? Well, I think, first of all, the event yesterday marks the end of a political process. And now, as Kenyans, led by the, the sworn-in president and his deputy, need to figure out what next for the next five years. For them, this is their second term in office, and for Uhuru himself, this would be his last term as president. And I think um, for me, in terms of the pledges that he made, I found them to border on an intent to think about what his legacy you know, for Kenyans would be. What would he want to be you know, you know, remembered for? But first and foremost, when he started by look map, giving out the roadmap, of where he wants to lead the country in the next uh, four, five years, the first thing he said was actually to strengthen ties that bind us as Kenyans towards a united country and one that where everyone feels like they're part of the, of the bigger story. For me, I think that is super critical right now and going forward, and that should be his headache like every single day in his term in office because this comes within the backdrop of the opposition leader, Raila Molodinga, also making his declarations, you know, yesterday that he is also going to be sworn in as, as, as president. And I'm thinking to me, uh, Uhuru is appreciating that there's a problem. He is appreciating that he is taking over a second term in office of a divided country. And he's also appreciating that it, he has to, you know, like lead from the front. He has to show us where to go. He has to show us, not just saying, but also by, by, by actions. So for me, I look forward to a very, very robust uh, and inclusive uh, government that he will form, that every person in Kenya, whether they voted for him, whether they did not vote for him, will feel that, yes, us as youth, we have a stake here. As, as women, we have a stake here. As, as persons living with disabilities or special conditions, we, are, you know, we, we have a stake here and we are included. But above all, when he said that I will be president for all, I think to me he was just strengthening his point that he wants to make effort to really include everyone, including those who did not vote for. He's appreciating that now he has to rise above, you know, b b politicking. He has to rise above politics and get to work. Now, the extent to which um, that is going to be achieved, I think, um, uh, is, is a good space to watch. Right. And I want to just urge him to just listen to the voices of all Kenyans. There are Kenyans who are celebrating, but there are those who are mourning. Without right a now. doubt. Right now, let's listen to part of what uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta had to say yesterday at his uh, inauguration. Take a look. It was one of the much awaited ceremony by the Jubilee supporters who thronged at the Kasarani Stadium for the swearing of President Uhuru Kenyatta and his deputy William Ruto. Prior to the administration of the oath, a Kenyatta and Ruto arrived amid world cheers by the thousands of the Kenyans who filled the 60,000 capacity sports arena Samu arrived at the facility from as early as 4 a.m. President Kenyatta then proceeded to inspect a guard of honor mounted by three divisions of the Kenya Defense Forces, the Army, the Kenya Air Force and the Kenya Navy. After that, the main ceremony began with the oaths, which were administered by an Amari, the chief registrar of the judiciary, in the presence of the chief justice, David Maraga. Pursuant to the provisions of Article 138, 10b of the Constitution of Kenya, therefore I, David Kenani Maraga, hereby introduce and wish to bring to the people of Kenya the president-elect Maragas and constitutional means mandating him to usher in a new president. Whereas Uhuru Kenyatta was on the 30th of October 
2017 declared as the duly elected president of the Republic of Kenya, pursuant to the provisions of Article 13810A of our Constitution. Rais Kenyatta Uhuru Kenyatta pledged to uphold the Kenyan Constitution and the rule of law. I, I Uhuru Kenyatta, in full realization, in full realization of the high calling, of the high calling, I assume as President of the Republic of Kenya, I assume as President of the Republic of Kenya. Another oath was that involving the due of execution. The President Kenyatta then proceeded to send the oath amid ululations and cheers by the Kenyans. The World Republic of Kenya peers. A Deputy President William Ruto took similar oaths, one swearing allegiance to the nation and the other pledging to duly execute the function of his office. I, William Samoye Ruto, I will obey, preserve, preserve, protect and defend this constitution of Kenya. Protect and defend this constitution of Kenya. As by law established. As by law established. Ruto said that he will work with all Kenyans, including those from the opposition side. Oh. That I will diligently discharge my duties and perform my functions and perform my functions in the said office. In the said office. To the best of my judgment. To the best of my judgment. That I will at all times. That I will at all times. When so required. When so required, faithfully and truly give my counsel. Faithfully and truly give counsel. After they took the oath of allegiance and the oath of due execution of the office, the two leaders signed the documents together with the Chief Justice David Maraga. My pleasure to bring before you the President of the Republic of Kenya. Congratulations. Uh, several heads of state and leaders were present at the Kasarani Sports Stadium ahead of the inauguration. The swearing ceremony of President Uhuru Kenyatta is now over and what now awaits for him is another big task of uniting all the 44 tribes in the country. This comes even after the Nasa leader Raila Odinga still insisting that he does not recognize Kenyatta's win. But for every TV from Kasarani, I'm Jeff Kaimba. Right, and uh, something from the history fact file right here on page 5 of the Standard newspaper. Did you know that history was reenacted yesterday as the son Uhuru Kenyatta recited words used by his father 54 years ago and the Bible which he lifted up, this was the official Bible that was used for the swearing-in ceremony as uh, President Kenya's founding president uh, Kenyatta used on December 12, 1963 and the the same Bible has been used by two other presidents, Daniel Moy and Moai Kibaki. How interesting is that? Okay, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta had a great speech, at, but we can only use it to maybe contribute to literature because from it we can derive such linguistic differences, such par paradox. Because Uhuru Kenyatta has been in power for the past five years. He took, he took oath of office in 2013. But the pledges that he made to Kenyans, he did not achieve them. So we cannot expect much from Muru Kenyatta, and uh, we just expect a lip service, more of a lip service from whatever you can see. You know, and maybe just to uh, highlight some of these pledges to the audience, because we talked about leadership, unity, uniting the country. There is land whereby the president uh, pledged that they will take adequate steps to address idle arable land and ownership of land in the country. Also, there is health, whereby he promised that uh, over the next five years, the government will target at achieving 100% universal health care in Kenya. Then there's also the economy, whereby he pledged that the Jubilee government will continue to strengthen Kenya's economic ties 
ties, bilateral and multilater multilateral relationships. Food, the president promised that uh, he will drive and ensure that uh, the government provides key enablers in farming to address food distribution in the country and also that every shilling of Kenyan taxpayer money must be fully accounted for. This of course comes after his pledge to fight corruption in the country, something we know that the Jubilee government was plagued with during the uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta's last term in office. And of, co of course here in education, he also pledged that the government will make learning available to all and also ensure that there is a great equalizer amongst learning institutions in the country by removing exam fees and providing laptops to all school going children in Kenya. Then also unity, we touched on that earlier. And uh, there is job creation here as well, creating employment opportunities for our young popula population as a top priority for his government. And finally here we have housing where he intends to come up with a home ownership plan that ensures every working family can afford a decent